Have you ever noticed how gas stations cluster on the exact same block? We look at these two. We got a Chevron right here and a mobile right next to it. Can that really be good for business? Often you show up to a block and there's two or sometimes even three gas stations all in that one place. And for me at least, this was counterintuitive for a really long time. If you're trying to compete with a business of the same kind, where you're selling basically the same good, wouldn't it be a better idea to put your business somewhere that the other people are not already doing business instead of trying to compete for the same exact customers in the same exact area? And this continued to be a question for me until I took a course in game theory and was able to tie this real world problem to a more theoretical, a very interesting problem called the hoteling problem. Now this takes many forms, it's explained in many, many different variations, but I'm going to explain it the way my game theory professor explained to me, because I find this way the most fun. And so here it goes. Let's say it is a hot summer's day, and there is a beach that is one mile long. So you can think of this just as a linear beach. In fact, let's just call it linear beach. So linear beach is one mile long, and since it's a hot summer's day, there's lots of beachgoers on the beach. And as people do when they go to the beach, they kind of uniformly distribute throughout the beach, so there's not, you're not too close to too many people. So everyone is uniformly scattered throughout this one mile stretch of beach. Now this is where you come in. You are an up and coming ice cream salesman. You hope to have a big chain of ice cream franchises in the future, but right now you're just a small fish in the game and you have your one little cart that you're trying to sell ice cream to people on this beach. Now it's not just you there, your competitor is there too. And your competitor makes and sells the exact same type of ice cream you do. There's no difference between your products. So on this beach, you have tons of uniformly distributed customers. You have yourself who's selling ice cream and you have your competitor who is also selling the same ice cream. Now, you both have a decision to make here. You both have these ice cream carts. You can move them wherever you want on this beach. The question is, where do you put your cart so that you are gonna be the one getting most of the revenue, getting most of the customers throughout the day. So let's start somewhere. Let's start you know, somewhere that makes sense. Let's say that you put your cart at the very left-hand side of the beach. So we'll just call that at position zero. And your opponent, your competitor, puts their cart at the very right-hand side of the beach. Let's call that position one at mile one. Now, again, these goods are exactly the same, same exact ice cream, and so customers don't really care which one they get. And so their decision about which cart to go to is going to be purely determined by which one's closer to them. And so it doesn't take too much thinking to see what's going to happen in this situation. All of the customers on the left hand, left half of the beach are going to go to you because you happen to be closer to them. All the customers on the right half of the beach are going to go to your opponent because they happen to be closer to them. And so you're going to split the customers 50-50. And based on the symmetry of this problem, it totally makes sense. But with game theory problems, you always have to ask one key question to know if you're done, which is, can anybody do better? Can you or your opponent do better, get more customers, by simply moving your cart somewhere else on the beach? And interestingly, maybe even counterintuitively, the answer is yes. And to see that, let's say you start thinking and you say, instead of putting my cart at zero, let's put my cart at 0 0.25, or a quarter mile into the beach. Does this help me? Well, thinking through it intuitively, a pair of ducks. So thinking through it intuitively, if you put your cart at a quarter mile down the beach, you're going to get all the customers to your left, because they're obviously closer to you. But crucially, you've captured some of your opponent's customers now. Because now between you and your opponent, there is 0.75 or three quarters of a mile, and you're going to get half of those customers. And half of those customers, plus the quarter of customers you've already gotten who are on your left, is going to be more than a half of the total amount of customers, which means you can do better by moving your cart there. Now again, in game theory problems, we have to ask, can anybody do better? Now let's put yourself in the shoes of your opponent, which is always a good thing to do in game theory problems, business in general, whatever. So your opponent now says, okay, this is bad. Uh, let's say I move my cart instead to at three quarters of a mile down the beach. So right now he is at one mile down the beach. Let's say he moves to the left slightly. So now he's at three quarters of a mile down the beach. And now again, you can probably tell already what's going to happen based on the symmetry of the problem. The customers will, of course, get split 50-50. But the point is that by doing this move, your opponent was able to regain up to 50% of the customers. 
and do better than he was doing before. The other very interesting note I would like to point out here, who have we not been thinking about so far, is the customers themselves. So the hoteling problem typically is more about these ice cream salesmen, but the customers themselves matter too, of course. And so let's think about the previous case we had where people, where you were on the left-hand side, your opponent was on the very right-hand side. What is the maximum distance somebody would have had to travel to get their ice cream? And that would have been half a mile. If you happen to be a customer in the exact middle of the beach, then of course you don't care which one you go to, but you do have to walk a whole half a mile just to get your ice cream. Now in this situation, where you are a quarter mile down the beach and your opponent is three quarters of a mile down the beach, what is the maximum distance any customer would need to walk? And again, you can consider that by saying you're a customer in the very middle of the beach or on the very ends of the beach in this case, all the same case. Now you only have to walk a quarter mile at most for any customer to get their ice cream. So although you and your opponent who are selling this ice cream are in the same situation, the customers are actually happier off here. Keep that in mind, that's gonna be important as we continue the story. Now again, we have to ask ourselves, is this the optimal setup, are we done? Well, the answer is no. Right now you're a quarter of the mile down the beach. Let's say you consider a move where you are exactly halfway down the beach, in the exact middle of linear beach. This is better, because now you've captured the 50% of the customers to your left, and you're gonna capture some fraction of customers between you and your opponent, therefore you're doing better than you were before. Your opponent makes the exact same decision. Your opponent says, I can do better by also just being halfway down the beach. And now, you're in this very weird, very counterintuitive situation where both you and your opponent are basically standing back to back in the middle of linear beach. You are serving, let's say, all the customers to the left of the beach. Your opponent is serving all the customers on the right-hand side of the beach. You're splitting these profits 50-50. And let's stop and think again. Can either of you do better? And now the answer is actually no. Let's put yourself in your shoes. Can you do better by moving left? Well, no, because if you move to the left, you'll capture everybody to your left, but you'll lose customers that you previously had on your right. Well, maybe we can do better by moving to our right. Well, the symmetry of the problem is the exact same explanation. If you move to your right, you'll capture a lot of customers on the right, but you'll lose enough customers where it doesn't make sense to do that. The symmetry of the problem says your opponent goes through the exact same thought process, and so this is the optimal setup. In game theory, we would call this something called a Nash equilibrium. All that means is that no agent in this game can do any better than they're doing now by changing their position, changing the action they're taking at this moment. And now, really quickly, let's think about the customers again. The customers are not better off right now, because if you think about the maximum distance anyone has to travel now, it's again gone back up to half a mile. If I'm on either end of the beach, I have to walk half a mile to get my ice cream. Whereas when you and your opponent were a quarter and three quarters of a mile on the beach respectively, that was a better outcome for all the customers. So it's very interesting that the thing that is beneficial for, in this case, the corporation, or maybe that's too strong of a word, but just the business here, the thing that is better for the business here, was actually worse for the customers. But that doesn't mean the business is going to change their decision because if either person was to change their decision, they would be losing customers at the end of the day. Now hopefully throughout this explanation, you were able to start seeing how this relates to the whole gas stations intro that we had in the beginning. This is of course a one-dimensional example. We had linear beach, but there's nothing to say we can't apply this to a two-dimensional use case. So if you think about a map, if you think about your city, basically your city is a two-dimensional, uh, some kind of grid maybe, and gas stations basically need to decide, based on where all the customers are, where am I gonna put this gas station? And now, of course, in the real world, there's many other considerations. Uh, for example, gas stations need to get their gas from somewhere. Maybe they're in the same place because the source of the gas is there and only there. Maybe there are other reasons, but at least part of the reason, and it's not just gas stations as well. You'll notice fast food restaurants are the same way. You might see a McDonald's and a Burger King and a Wendy's kind of in the exact same neighborhood, and it's kind of strange. And one of the big reasons for this is the conclusions that we just learned from this hoteling problem, which is that businesses who are selling more or less the same good. With gas, I think it's pretty much the same good in most people's eyes with fast food. Maybe there's a little bit of differentiation, but still, it's kind of the same good. For businesses who are more or less selling the same good and who have the same customer base, it's actually beneficial for them to be right next to each other, rather than try to diversify and spread out throughout the city. And to close things off, I just wanted to do a simulation of this in two dimensions to make sure that everything we're saying makes sense. So I just coded up a quick script in Python uh, of having two gas stations, 
having a uniformly distributed set of customers who are in a big circle. And basically just keep trying out random positions of these two gas stations inside this grid until you find a configuration such that neither person moving is beneficial to them. And you see that eventually we settle on exactly what we found in this one-dimensional linear beach example, which is that the optimal setup is for these two gas stations or, or two fast food restaurants or two bakeries, whatever you want to think about, being right back to back, right smack dab in the middle of the customer base. Again, even though that's going to mean the customers who are on the outside of this customer base are going to have a pretty bad experience. They're going to have to travel a great distance in order to get the goods they want to get. So hopefully you found this kind of interesting. This is one of my favorite problems in game theory, I think, just because it's so counterintuitive to me, at least. Maybe this was perfectly intuitive to you. Just differences in opinion here. But I thought it was so counterintuitive that this would be a good outcome for any business to want to do. Yet, we see examples of it in the real world every single day as you drive down the street. So if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you for sticking around. Please like and subscribe for more videos just like this, and I will catch you next time.